I'm not positive that this is the correct way to design a railing. I did a lot of research, but I could still pretty easily be wrong. But it seemed like the point at which the handrail starts angling downward should be lined up with the face of the top stair. In my mind, this made sense because your hand sort of naturally will reach out and feel that point on the railing, and then the rest of your body will know where the edge of the stairs start. But take this all with a grain of salt. Drawing a line at the center of the post at the top stair edge to the same point on the bottom stair gives me the angle of the stairs. Then I can bring a guide up parallel from this line and intersect it with the top of the railing. Leaving the railings long lets me see how the different pieces will intersect each other and then I can clean them up a little bit to see the final fit. I usually don't trust the measurements in the model. It seems like real life's always a little bit different and there are little variables that you don't account for, like uneven floorboards. But the main thing I was trying to figure out here was the height at which the handrail gets welded to the bottom post. I figured if I knew that, then I could go ahead and set the railing in place and just mark it and cut it based on that. That's gotta be a lot more accurate than having a computer tell me how long it should be. I just couldn't figure out how I was gonna accurately measure this with a tape measure, especially by myself. I clamped a plate on the bottom post at the correct height, which let me set the railing in place and mark it with my sharpie. After marking the top as well, I grab my angle grinder to cut the ends off. It was a pretty good fit. So I went ahead and welded it. A little bit of blending later, I moved down to the bottom and got it welded to the post. There was a tight angle in the top to get welded there, but I was mostly able to do it. The railing sagged a little bit in the middle, I think mostly from its own weight, so I grabbed one of my tie down straps and raised it up a little bit. Those tie down straps are really cheap labor. I mounted the plates for the middle posts on the stairs where I wanted them and then set the posts in place and got them level so again I could mark them at the right height. I tacked them onto the plates at the bottom and then unbolted them so I can get them welded up and cooled down before I put it back on the stair and welded the top part in place. I cut out another bracket that I can sink some leg screws through into the wooden beam up top. And got it welded on. And that was the last rail I needed to weld in place. Next. I moved on to designing some brackets for the cable hardware to hook to. It's pretty nice to be able to sit right in front of what you're wanting to design. Gives you a little better perspective on it, I think. Man, I've been loving my CNC plasma table. It's just completely changed what's possible to fabricate here on our small family farm. I'll give a little plug to CNC router parts. Their table's been great. And I've had zero regrets about my investment. Except maybe wishing I had done it earlier. I welded a mounting plate onto the top hooks and got it bolted to the beam. The bottom loops I swooped up just a little bit 
so they would match the angle that the cables come in at. And looking at my SketchUp design, I know the height that this bracket needs to be mounted to maintain the distance between all the cables and the rails. My buddy Pat was over hanging out for the day, so I put him to work cleaning up the metal. He wiped it down with some acetone to remove any oil and get it ready for some clear coat. He also taught me a really advanced technique for shaking up two paint cans at once. Oh, you're doing great. After we let the enamel dry for a little bit, we were ready for the cables. Or so we thought. And you gotta roll it back up though so it looks for the shot. Yeah, it's gotta be it's gotta be fresh. You know that. I drilled these holes on the drill press originally, but we were having trouble getting them to feed through. So I just took my handheld drill and stuck the bit in and kinda angled it over towards the second hole until both holes were lined up and then the cables slipped right through pretty easily. I used a thimble and some aluminum cable crimps to attach the cable to the turnbuckle. And then the turnbuckle hooks onto the brackets I welded onto the metal post. Leaving the turnbuckle as loose as it goes down below, I pulled as much of the slack out up top before feeding it around the thimble and crimping the cable clamp. It's not like tight tight. We got a lot of adjustment down there yeah. on these, so it's not too critical. <clears throat> Lastly, I trim the excess cable off, flush with the clamp. All right, tighten up that bottom one. All right, I just needed to tighten up the bottom one and then repeat the process seven more times. The last thing I wanted to lump in with this project was to put the tin up on the wall underneath the stairs. I felt like it was a small thing that would really finish off the stairs and give it a more finished look for the wedding in a couple weeks. I had to notch out some weird shapes around the stairs. It took some trial and error. I found that my plasma cutter is as easy as anything else for cutting a tin. And that was it. The railing was done. I'm really glad I pushed hard on the railing and got it done before the wedding. I think it kind of invites you up the stairs and into the loft area, which will be great for the wedding because having the loft area really increases the floor space in the barn, which we really needed because we're expecting thousands and thousands of guests at this wedding. It's been declared the event of the decade. This is going to be a celebration the likes of which this town's never seen. <laughs>